Hello everybody. We're going to go ahead and just take a quick look at setting breakpoints in Visual Studio. Now, before I go on, I'm going to point out that this video is just showing you how to set a breakpoint and what they do in Visual Studio. For more information, I very much recommend that you check out this uh, page here in Microsoft's documentation, Use Breakpoints in the Visual Studio Debugger. There's a lot of things you can do with breakpoints, so I'm not going to get into all of them, especially because they have a very specific purpose. Not everybody needs to use them all the time, and not everybody needs to use all of their feature set. So, uh, I will go ahead and link this in the comments of the video, but otherwise we're going to go ahead and just do a brief overview about breakpoints. Let's go ahead and look at this code here. It's just a simple C Sharp application that immediately runs this for loop and then waits for the user input to go ahead and terminate. Uh, now, as the for loop runs, I will go ahead and increase uh, by one every single iteration. Okay? Starting with zero, ending at nine, it'll print out to the console. Current value is zero, one, two, three, up through nine. Okay, pretty straightforward. Now, what a breakpoint does is it allows you to go ahead and pause execution of code while it's running inside the editor so that you can go ahead and evaluate that code uh, more in depth. Uh, it's useful for going ahead and tracing out errors, for uh, double checking if you're finding odd issues with your code, if it's not behaving the way basically that you expect it to. Sometimes that's an error on your part, sometimes it's just the code is uh, set up to do something that you did not expect it to, especially when dealing with third-party libraries. Um, it also allows you to do things like connect to other frameworks and that oftentimes and debug that code uh, by being able to go in and step into function calls in the other code. And I'll go ahead and I'll briefly touch on all of that um, right now. Now, there are a couple different ways to set a breakpoint in Visual Studio. The easiest way is to go ahead and go over here into the left hand second to last column and on the line you want to set the breakpoint on you just left click and it goes ahead and sets a breakpoint. Now a breakpoint will pause execution of your code on the line that you have dropped a breakpoint and it will pause execution before running this line of code. So when my for loop runs it'll go ahead and stop running before it's gone ahead and called console.writeLine. Okay. Now, show you how this works. If I go ahead and run my application, immediately it jumped over here into the editor. That's because uh, my for loop is the first thing that my code does, and it goes ahead and goes into my for loop, immediately hits the console.writeLine, line, line 11, and therefore triggers my breakpoint. Now when the breakpoint is triggered, it will jump you back from the application to the IDE. And now you can go ahead and you can start looking at different inf pieces of information. Okay. Uh, now some of this information you can see when your application is normally running, but now you can go ahead and pause your application to really investigate different values. Things like you can go to the locals tab down here and review the local variable values. Okay. You can go ahead and look over here in the call stack and it will tell you which line you are currently have a breakpoint set on that's been hit. I can go up to my code and I could mouse over the i and it'll tell me, hey, this is the current value of i. Okay. I can mouse over this variable telling me what the current value of the string array is for my main and, uh, method argument. You can go ahead and investigate any global variables, any localized variables that are in the current function you are in. If I click continue, now I'm in a for loop, so it's going to keep hitting this line again and again and again. Breaks again. I can mouse over i. Now i is a value of 1. If you continue again, i should be 2. Let's say I want to let my, I want to stop uh, debugging this and I just want to let it run, I can go over here, clear my breakpoint by left clicking again on it, and then click continue. And it's just going to let my code run and take me back to the application. Uh, of course my application was set up just to print current value is 0 through 9 on the screen. It did just that. Go to end it. And it's fine. Now there's a couple other, run this again, things you can do with breakpoints. 
happening. Then there's the continue button, which says, no, no, just let it run. I'm done. I'm done with this uh, current break. I can stop my application from running, which is the same as if you were, whether you have breakpoints or not. The three other buttons you want to look at, though, are these, the step into, step over, and step out. The step into will go ahead and, in this case, uh, not do anything because it's I this is a built-in function uh, to C sharp okay to the console uh, class now if I had a custom function here it'd go ahead and go to that function and keep going down okay? I could do step over which would just do pretty much the same thing you see here now it's just gonna say okay you want to s just go to the next line and step out of, which will go ahead and if I have stepped into a deeper function, it'll then take me back out. We can just click continue and let it run. Okay. You'll see that step over uh, lets you go ahead and investigate each line or e each call as it goes through one by one. Uh, and then step over is just going to go ahead and say, okay, you want to get out of this current loop that you're in and let the let it run again. Okay. Now again, this is just a very basic overview. Uh, I recommend that you check out that link, uh, play around with breakpoints. They can be very helpful in trying to debug your code.